We're not professional dog trainers. We're not animal behavioralists. We're just a couple of girls who love shelter dogs and collectively have a lot of experience with fostering and volunteering at shelters. So we'd love to present you this video series in hopes that it will help you and be a resource for you during the process of fostering or adopting a shelter dog. You've filled out the application, it's been approved, and lucky you, you're getting a foster. So before you bring home your new foster, there's a few things you want to do to prepare your home, especially if you have pets at home. So the first thing you're going to want to do is pick up food and water bowls and any toys. This will eliminate the possibility of a conflict arising due to resource guarding. And if you have the intention of getting a puppy as a foster, pick up everything that you love and cherish so that it doesn't get destroyed by the pup NATO. You'll want to set up a crate for your new foster. Set it up in a social spot like the living room so that they can retreat if they need to but still be part of the action. If you have a backyard, you'll want to make sure that it's secure that there's no areas that the dog could sneak out of, and please never leave your dog unattended in the backyard. So now you're absolutely losing your mind. You have a new foster in the house. You're picking out matching outfits, you're planning play dates, you're wanting to take them for rides around town and parade them around to meet all of your friends. But wait! Your foster's gonna need some time to decompress and get to know their new house, their new people, and their new foster siblings. The shelter is a really loud, crazy, stressful environment, and it may take a couple days to weeks for your foster to really settle in and relax. I just need to chill and shake the shelter off me. You dig? So give them some time, and before you know it, you'll start to see their true, weird, goofy, silly personalities come out. So let's talk a little bit about keeping your foster and your resident pet separate at first. Before you do proper dog-to-dog -dog intros, you'll need some tools to keep the dog separate in the house and for feeding separately. So a couple things that you'll need is number one, the crate, and number two, a baby gate. Let's talk about dog-to-dog -dog intros. You won't want to introduce your dog to the foster inside your house. We suggest that you start with a side-by-side -side walk so that they can see each other from a distance and slowly get a little bit closer together and do some butt sniffing. It's a dog's way of kind of saying hello and checking out and making sure that the other dog is cool. So take your time with this part and really pay attention to the dog's body language. If they seem curious and playful, move them a little bit closer for some more sniffing and interaction, but it's really important that you do not have them meet face to face. It's a really intimidating interaction for dogs. If one or both looks stressed out or scared or agitated, continue to keep distance and use words of encouragement and give them some affection to let them know that they're safe. So these type of introductions can take some time, sometimes a couple of days to a couple of weeks, but just keep at it and be patient. It's the best way that we've found for dogs to get to know each other and successfully cohabitate together during their time in foster. In the meantime, you'll wanna keep the dog separate while in the house so you can use separate rooms, you can use the crate and baby gates. So lastly, I wanna talk about feeding separately and crate time. You will always wanna feed your foster dog separate from your own dogs. It's a good idea to feed your foster in their crate, but you can always feed them in separate rooms or separated by a baby gate. If your foster dog is the only pet in the home, it's still a good idea to feed them, give them treats and toys and stuffed Kongs in their crate as well. This way, they'll learn that the crate is their personal space and that it's rewarding to be in there. The more time they enjoy in their crate, the easier time they will have when you have to leave the house and leave them alone for a little while. So next time around, we'll be discussing crates and the do's and don'ts of crates, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching episode two of Gimme Shelter Dogs. Stay tuned, stay healthy, and keep fostering. Bow, wow, wow, wow. Can you hear me how? Scratching at your door. Begging for a home. Ah, ooh, ooh, ooh. I am so blue. Since you
drop me at the pound I sleep on cold hard ground Why, 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 why Do you just walk on by When I'm barking at you To come give me a try I'm such a good boy I'm such a good boy I'm a bug on you Thank you for listening. Stay tuned. We have a lot more informative and fun videos for you. Hashtag foster in place. Church of Dawn.